running through a field and I was like, ah, and Richard was trying to like help me because I was like going and um, then we got stampeded by a load of cows which ran up behind us. And actually, I, he, he said, they're going to kill us. I said, no, they'll just stop the bullets, mate. <laughs> they shoot us. I said, no, just let them do it. So these, these cows, cows are running nose, and, nose to back with us. And, uh, and we were hobbling across the field. But we got the photos. So uh, first unofficial photos out of, uh, out of this place. And uh, the MOD said that, no, they weren't shooting at us. Um, that it was a firework display in a nearby house. Richard says he knows that they were shotguns. He said they were, he said he fired shotguns. He said they were shotguns, and the others, you know, I don't really know up close what a submachine gun sounds like or a machine gun, but um, yeah, you'd probably know. <laughs> but um, an exciting day, and uh, strangely enough, in many of these tunnels, a lot of these tunnels down there, um, you have people have daubed aliens on the walls. Now I don't say, and there's even something that looks a bit like a crop circle up there. It's a squiggly triangle thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been accused of saying uh, that because they investigated UFOs at RAF Redlow Manor, that they have a UFO in the bunker and aliens live there. <laughs> I don't think, I'd love to see it if I have, but I don't think I've ever said anything like that. What I have said is that there are pictures of aliens on the walls down there and that they used to investigate UFOs. Uh, that's it, you know. There's no, I've never heard of UFO stored at Redlow Manor, but it's an interesting place. Anyway, if we take a little break, then we can come back to Freemasons and Secret Society. So, should you take a 15 minute break, is it? Yeah, 15, 20. Uh, cool, okay, so thanks very much. Uh, next week we've got Alice Sturgeon, which is a, a film presentation for me between Bristol. Very spiritual, very interesting. We've got our last film for a few weeks, and on the back of that, uh, we've got the programme. Okay. Alright. For the next few weeks. Other than that, back to you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Um, right, well, thanks. Uh, on to the Freemasons and secret societies. Um, there are a lot of famous Freemasons, such as Winston Churchill, who was. Uh, um, one very well-known Freemason, the Duke of Kent, who is the leader of Freemasonry, um, Prince Philip. You know, they, a lot of the royal family and a lot of the elite do tend to join the Freemasons. And some, it leads some people to believe uh, that, you know, to get on in society at higher levels, one would have to join the Freemasons in order to get on. Um, all of these secret societies teach that they are outside um, normal ideas of understanding society and that they have higher moral rules and that they're in some ways a different breed of person by being a Freemason that it, it can make you a better person and that um, moral is an important thing to the Freemasons so they say um, the reality I've found from meeting high-level Freemasons is that um, the one thing about being a good Freemason is you always brag it up. You know, what is Freemasonry? It's a wonderful group of people and we really do work for charity. It's just like being at your local golf club and things like that. Well, it's quite clearly not like being at a local golf club because at a local golf club they don't get dressed up in aprons and play tending to kill each other and things like this, which um, is part of the theatrics of what Freemasonry does. But um, there's a lot of hypocrisy and doublespeak in Freemasonry, where Freemasons claim to be very moral, upstanding people, but their beliefs in the way I've seen them are very different. I've had um, a head of the Bridgend Lodge, a guy called Alan Churchill, he used to tell me how wonderful the Freemasons were and how moral they were. And uh, we had a business arrangement whereby I would um, supply my video editing experience to him free of charge in order to have use on some of his studio equipment. And I brought over some of my equipment and it sub supplemented. So we had a nice studio uh, set up and I would just help him out and this sort of stuff. Now that was the arrangement. Now when it all went sour, which was because um, you know, he was allowed to use my equipment to make money. 
um, and I was allowed to use his equipment to make money. But uh, when I did that, um, I was told, well, you're actually making money now. I want you to pay me. And I said, well, all right, then why didn't you pay me for the use of the equipment and the time I spend coming out to teach you how to use it and fix all your faults? And he said, oh, you can fuck off, <laughs> basically. And uh, I said, oh, charming. And I said, well, just take my kit then. No, you're not taking your kit. I'm keeping that. You know, you better. So wonderful Freemason, believes in high morals and high standards, dealing with people like that. I went to work for Customs and Excise for a number of years, and I was told when I entered by um, Mike Baker, who's the brother of Colin Baker, Doctor Who, he was my manager in, in Customs and Excise, and he said to me a few times, he said, the Freemasons really do control this place. And he told me a number of stories about um, uh, people being employed in uh, some places. We were, I was working in personnel, by the way, and uh, he told me about people that had been employed and never actually had an interview for the job. And they were friends of the big bosses, and they just come to work, and they haven't had an interview. And this is the civil service, and this just doesn't happen, but it did for these people. They just bypassed the interview completely. And um, Mike Baker said he'd actually uh, pointed out some of these things and his card had been marked and he was going to basically be pushed off into early retirement because he stood in the way of people being able to do these things you know and he was standing in the way saying this is not the right practice you shouldn't be doing this and it goes against all the civil service rule books that say how you actually employ people and you're going against it so his card was marked and he was frog marched out uh, to an early retirement and um, I, with my UFO research, I actually uh, ruffled a few feathers working in the civil service at the time. And, you know, other people would never get any problems. But me being the UFO researcher, I got everything from, you're claiming expenses for things you haven't done. And I'd have to go, look, this is what I've done. And this is why I claim the expenses, because I had to do that. And, like, and it would be like every every. You know, a couple of weeks, it'd be something I'd done wrong. You know, oh, you made a personal phone call. Really? Well, everybody makes personal phone calls. It's not a problem, is it? You know, I mean, I have to ring into work, and I don't actually bill you for the f calls I make into work for work's time. And if I have to ring somebody for two seconds on the phone, what's the problem? And I said, you know, you, you know, Mavis here spends two hours a day on the phone, you know, and she's talking to her friends. I make a one-minute phone call. Ah, but we're not here to talk about Mavis. We're here to talk about you. I said, well, that's what it's about, really, isn't it? It's not about phone calls. It's about me. And, you know, basically, I saw a number of things going on in the department that were evidential of Freemasons. They run the civil service. They, to my understanding, they run um, large parts of the police. And um, they're basically quite high up in the uh, military as well. It's an expectation for certain people, if they want to gain rank, to have been in the Freemasons. Now, the reason for this is because there's an understanding that these people can be trusted because they have gone through the rites of Freemasonry. I contest that actually because people join Freemasons because they want to get on, they are power hungry and that this will drive people to work against others of a similar standing so that they will get a job ab above somebody else. And this is actually corrupting. And we see this in, in government, that uh, people with ties to companies and you know things, they often get preferential treatment when they make donations to the government and this sort of thing. Uh, so it's basically Freemasonry is a, is a corrupt society in so much as that it serves to put its members above other people and above other people's needs. But this is not how Freemasonry will paint themselves. What they actually say in the Freemasons is, and I've just got uh, a slide with some uh, famous Freemasons. It's interesting that on this list of famous Freemasons, this, this is current, this list, um, from last night I took this down, um, they don't seem to mention any current Freemasons in positions of power. And that's interesting because um, about nine months ago,